First off, I'd like to say very special thanks to Dave Cross for putting on the Photoshop Virtual Summit. And I'm excited to get a chance to share with you some time-saving tips inside of Photoshop. My name's Rich Harrington, I'm the publisher of PhotoFocus. And what we're gonna cover here are things that are just gonna help you get things done more quickly. Okay, we're in the home stretch. Adobe Bridge, an excellent companion tool that just keeps getting better and it works with Photoshop. It is filled with automation commands. Now in here, we can only touch on a few of these, but you could use workspaces to get organized. There's cool things coming in the near future with Bridge as well that you're gonna to wanna to check out. Plus you could preview files, batch rename, export, do file format conversions. It's really useful. Let me show you a few of these. What you're gonna notice when you launch Bridge is it's a file browser. It's useful for rating, organizing, adding metadata, all sorts of stuff. And you could change the workspaces depending upon what you need to accomplish, and this will make it a lot easier. For example here, you notice in the output workspace, I could do some pretty cool things. For example, I could generate something here and set this up like a fine art mat. And now I could just drag my image in and it's gonna place it, which is pretty cool. Or we could use this to create something like a grid and again, get total control over which images we add and start to build these out. So the output module has a lot of templates in here that are quite useful for generating content, making contact sheets and others, and being a bit more interactive as you go. You'll notice actually that they expose all sorts of controls here and the ability to add watermarks. So if you're looking for something that's self-contained and builds upon some of those contact sheets and slideshow options you saw in Photoshop, I would actually check this out in Bridge because it's much more modern with way more controls. Okay, what else can we do? Well, here's a simple one. If you've got an animation file, you can actually easily preview it. For example, I do a lot of time-lapse photography. Let's go here to more of a film strip view and select all of these images. What you can do is group them into a stack. This is quite useful so you can preview things. Just choose stack, group as stack, and then you can right click on the stack here and go in and assign a frame rate. This is pretty cool because now it's gonna do a preview. Let's switch here to an essentials view and we'll make this a little bit larger and watch, you can play it back like it was a movie. So if you've got a time-lapse sequence, stop motion animation, you kinda of wanna see what you built here, it's pretty cool how you can draw this out and build a simple animation. This is really useful if you do these types of GIFs or anything else with sequential images or even movies. Another thing it's awesome at is renaming your files. So you don't have generic file names that really don't help you when you go search. What you can do here is select a bunch of images inside a bridge and choose tools, batch rename. This is incredibly robust. You can move them, copy them, rename them, or modify the originals. Give it some custom name here, like this is Chicago underscore, give it a sequential image number. You can add extra content here. For example, maybe I want to add a date timestamp. Well, I can go in here and just say to add custom text. Let's put another underscore there and then add yet another string such as date and time. And I could say put the date created in there. This is really cool because it helps you find your content you get a good example of how it's gonna be renamed there. Additionally, when you do this, you can decide what you wanna see happen. When you rename, should it be permanent or should you actually preserve the original file name in the metadata? What that allows you to do is go back and batch rename to restore the original file name or look it up in the embedded properties. And when you click rename, all the files take on the new properties, which is really cool and a great way to get organized. Now, I mentioned that output module. This thing is really quite cool. If you explore this, you'll find that there's a wealth of templates. This makes it simple to choose the type of option you're looking to output. And besides the ability to support different layouts, you'll also notice that it supports different paper sizes, resolutions. This is gonna just make it absolutely great if you wanna to start to drop different pieces in. So for example, this is some of my son's artwork and perhaps he wants to show some of his progressions from the initial sketch to a filled in piece to the final piece of artwork. And you see that's pretty cool. 
We can also remove the information there just to have those. And I love how that goes ahead and adjusts those and fits them on the page. Plus, what's really cool is you can even add a watermark to the page. So if you've got a logo or things of that nature, you can actually just jump right in there and drop that in. So let's go ahead here and take the watermark and I'll just select the file. There we go. And you see it drops it in. We could adjust that, scale it, and even tell it where to place it right on the page. And you see how simple that is, which is really quite cool. It's gonna place it right on the image or on the page itself. So that way, if you don't want it to cover the images, you could just set it right over the rest, like so, and have that on the page, which is really quite cool. Then you export right to PDF, where you can print or share or do anything else. Speaking of sharing, there's one more thing to point out, and that is that we've got this great option here for export. This makes it super easy to convert your files, and so you'll find these types of export workflows. You can now select images, convert to DNG. You can make your own export presets, so you can decide where the images go, do they get converted, scaled, resized, you name it, and it supports a wide type of options here. So this is much like the image processor script, but even more flexible because you can save target destinations. So if you've got a bunch of images that you need to post for clients or make JPEGs really quickly for, for previews or for sharing on the internet, you can just save a preset, target a folder, pick the compression options and drag and drop all day long. It's really quite cool. If you'd like to continue the learning, I offer a couple different ways to do that. Remember, PhotoFocus has daily content that's gonna give you news, information, tutorials, and tips, not just from me, but more than 20 other great photographers. And you can check out ThinkTap Learn. This is another online platform where I offer courses that will help you out.